Hey, what's going on everyone? It's HSO bringing you a new video on Duel Links, kind of. And today what we're going to do is look at the brand new box, go over all the cards. I'm going to give you my opinion on them, give you some strategies, give maybe some deck ideas for when they actually come to the box and tell you overall what I think of it and what cards I think are going to shine from the box. So yeah, it looks like a pretty hype box. I'm excited. I've already looked over it and I'm excited for a couple of cards. Some other cards I'm kind of on the line. We'll have to wait until they're in game to figure out if they're good or not. But yeah, let's just jump straight into it and see what we can find that can interest us. So the main box is, well, the box is based around this guy right here, the Red Eye Slash Dragon. And what you basically need is a Red Eye Black Dragon, one warrior monster in your hand, and you have to use Poly to fuse it to bring it out. Um, and then, yeah, what you can do is... When a red ice monster declares an attack, you can target one warrior monster in your graveyard, equip it to this card as an equip spell with the effect, it gains 200 attack, and if the red ice slash dragon is targeted by anything, you can you can um, get the warrior monster that's equipped, send it to the graveyard, and destroy the whatever like targets it. I have some issues with this card, for the simple fact it's pretty hard to get out if you think about it because you need to open up with a red ice you need to open up with a warrior polarization and something to like keep you alive but it seems like a cool card i don't think it'll see so much play because at the moment red ice is perfect in the game with um just a straight up beatdown. it's super fast and this will probably slow down red ice quite a lot if you try and focus your deck around it still a really really cool card to see the artwork is amazing but the Bujins are what I want to discuss the most because this deck is going to be really, really good. It's got some weaknesses, but it's still going to be very good. Because one of the most annoying things in Duel Links is decks that spam the field really fast and that can just keep recycling over and over, and the Bujins can do that. So once per turn during the end phase, you can add one Bujin monster from your deck to your hand, then send one card from your hand to the graveyard. You can only um, control one of these monsters on the field. It's pretty good ability, especially um, comboed with the other Buijins, because Buijins work from the grave, they work from the banish pile, they work from your deck to your hand. They, they just keep um, like popping off all over the place. They're really, really cool. So yeah, Buijins getting added to Duel Links is a pretty cool thing. Um, a lot of people are hyped around that. It's going to be really cool to see. Um, here's another SR that we're going to get. The equipped monster gains 900 attack for each card in either player's graveyard that has the same name it does. So if, you, if you're if you in a mirror match and you're both using like Red Ice, for example, if there's Red Ice is in both graveyards, the mon um, your mo monster on the field is going to gain way more attack. It's a pretty cool card. It's going to um, be really good in mirror matches, but I don't know. It could see some play in some other decks like the Buujin because it worked, their deck works from the graveyard. So running a few of these might work. There's some other decks I can th um, can't think about. It'll work in a few decks, I can see, like Red Ice might be powerful. This card is stupid, especially for control decks, burn decks, mill decks. During your opponent's turn at damage calculation, make the battle damage you take zero and draw a card. Really powerful card, especially for all these control decks, especially mill. It can work with so much stuff. When I saw this card, the first thing I thought about was a Necro um, Necrophia Destiny board deck. Because obviously you have to store your opponent out after when you lose them 2,000 life points and have the Necro in the graveyard. You get to draw a card and you take no damage. It'll also yeah, it'll also work in most control decks. So there's some support for control decks which is really cool. And here's some combos right here. Light Swarm with the Buijins but I wouldn't recommend that. Just don't know what you're talking about Konami. Don't do that. That's a cool combo. I did tell everyone to pick up this guy um, from the pick a card event thing. Because it's going to work with so many new dragons that are going to come out in the future, especially if we get um, Light and Darkness Dragon on the Chaz event. It's going to be so good. So hopefully you guys picked up an, um, one of these as well. Plus you can get another one from Mokiba at level 40. So just in case you didn't, you'll be able to get one at least. And you can like combo it because obviously you need a warrior type and you can equip a warrior type and you equip that. And then that effect pops off and they just keep cycling each other back out. It's really, really cool. So let's go over all the, well, the two URs, the SRs, and all the other cards. This box has got some really, really nice stuff. It's a mini box, by the way. So we've got Sniper Hunter right here. A bit of a troll card. This card is going to be insane in the Joey um, flip, flip a look on your side deck, or whatever it's called. 
where you lose life points and then you can just... Oh no, this is a die. This is a dice one. I thought it was a flip coin. Um, so, I guess this will be good if we ever get Duke, and then he has an ability where he can roll whatever he wants, or something crazy like that. You can discard one card, target one card on the field, roll a dice. If it lands on a 1 or a 6, you can destroy that card. 1,500, not the best, like, attack or anything. But, something really sneaky about this card, which most people are going to overlook. It works in Dark Worlds. <laughs> the discard one card will trigger Dark Worlds because it's not classed as like a proper cost um, effect because I remember back in the day some people actually ran this in Dark Worlds because they might get the ability to destroy something on the field plus they get the ability from whatever card they discarded with Dark Worlds so that's a pretty cool card plus it's a fiend so that's pretty awesome we looked over the Slasher Dragon we looked over that um, yep this is really cool Paladin of the Cursed Dragon I ran this in my zombie deck like way back in the day once per turn, target one level 4 or lower zombie monster in your opponent's graveyard. That was destroyed by battle, special summon it to your satisfied field. So it's kind of like Red Eye Zombie Dragon in a similar way, but with Zombie Dragon, as soon as it destroys something, if it was a zombie type, you get special summon it. With this, it's only a level 4 or lower zombie type. Still, a 1900 zombie beta is pretty powerful and pretty cool to see. So that's something that we're getting. We're getting skill successor, target one face-up monster you control against 400 attack until the end of the turn. During your turn, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard and target one face-up monster you control and it gains 800. So you basically flip it, you gain 400 that turn, and then when it's in the graveyard you can banish it from your graveyard to gain 800 attack, so it's a pretty cool card. I don't see how much play it's going to get, but it's still there. When your opponent special summons a monster with 2,000 or more attack, which is all the time, decks these days love special summoning monsters with a lot of attack, negate the effects of one of those monsters with 2,000 or more attack, and if you do destroy it, so Phoenix, I can see this killing Phoenix and killing some other stuff, I, I guess, pretty cool. I guess it stops, um, what's it called, Dark Worlds when you, um, the big monster pops off from the graveyard, I'm not too sure if it'll stop that, but it's still cool to see. We've looked over that um, Bujian. We got Dawn Knight right here. He's like the other knights that we got where you can. Um, this one's based on light. There's a wind one in game, water and um, like earth and stuff like that. It's just basically the same, but for light. And we got Paladin of the Dark Dragon. Pretty cool fusion, not fusion ritual. Uh, that start of the damage step. This if it type. Oh, it's just basically the same as the Red Ice Paladin. Like, the Paladin of the Red Ice. I mean, Paladin of the Blue Ice, I mean. What we got from the box way back in the day. Still a pretty cool card, but... Yeah. It's not going to see um, too much play. Royal Command. Flip Monsters effects can't be activated, also they're negated, basically. So what that means is, um, if all you're facing is flip monsters all the time, throw one of these in your decks and it's just going to shut them down completely. Not that good of a card, that's why it's a rare, but it's in the game now. Luster Dragon, it's a rare, with 1,900. The power creep is real. It's a dragon as well, so if you run mountains, this guy's going to be powerful. He's a normal type. It's really cool to see Luster Dragon playable in the game right now. Now we just wait for Alexandra Dra Dragon, which is a 2k normal beta. And now we've got a crane. If this is special summon, draw one card, 1,600, 400 defense. Eh. I guess um, there's some combos maybe, or special summon in this and just drawing the card, because why not? I don't know how good it's going to be, but we got, a, we got a crane. Vampire's Cursed, we got more vampire-y zombie goodness in this box. When this card destroy, when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can pay 500 life points special summon it during the next standby phase, and when you do it gains 500. This is a really cool card. When I um, saw this, I'm like, that'll work really well in like, Destiny draw or something crazy where um, your skill pops off when you lose life points. Really cool zombie curse, awesome card. I'm gonna probably end up building a deck around him. So we got Rainbow Veil right here. If the equipped monster battles an opponent's monster while this while that monster is on the field, it's negated effects during the battle stage only. So what might, what that means is monsters that effects go off in the battle stage, um, their effects are negated, but 
if the effects go off in main phase or anything, this is useless. Not that too good of a card, but it might see some play in some decks, we never know. This guy's cool. I like this 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 is a cool card. I used to call him um, Blaziken. Not Blaziken, the other fight starter. Oh, what's he called? The f Fire Monkey starter. I cannot remember his name right now. Infernape? Infernape. <laughs> this is the Infernape card. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can add one monster with 200 defense or less from um, your deck to your hand. This will work in so many decks, it doesn't have to be a fire pyro or any kind of deck. This could work in any deck where the main monsters have, like, even the big monsters, you can get 8 star monsters with 200 or lower defense. You can just grab one from your deck and add it to your hand. So it's a good search card, really cool card. We've got um, Daybreaker right here. When this card is special summon, do you can special summon one Daybreaker from your hand? What? 1700 Warrior? Meh. I guess it's already, it's not the best card. We've got Photon Lead. This is a really cool card. I think this should have been an SR, personally. Special summon one level 4 or lower light monster from your hand face up in attack position. This is going to be really cool. Especially, I don't know what, this, this is going to be a cool card, trust me. Because you get to, it's like a double summon for lights, and it's quick play. It's just really cool. Plus you can play it um, from your, in your opponent's turn because it's a quick play, so it's really cool. You just put this face down on their turn, you can special summon at level 4 if you need to, it's really cool. And what you special summon could be anything, so it could mess with your opponent if you special summon it on their turn, especially in the battle phase. And now we got this guy... Ooh, I saw this card and it actually looked really interesting. You can activate only one of them per turn. During the end phase of the turn, this card was activated. Apply the effects depending on the number of monsters distributed from the field. No, from your hand. Yeah. Distributed from. Sorry, the text is so small for me right now. Distributed from the field and from your hand this turn. Also, you're getting the effects depending on how many times you're distributed in one turn. If you're distributed one, you draw one card. Two, add two monsters from your graveyard to your hand. And three, destroy up to three face up cards on the field. So that sucks, it'll be cool if it was just three cards, that way you can target face downs, but it's still a pretty cool card. So you find a deck which tributes quite a lot and throw a couple of them in and you can have some fun, which is cool. We've got a Bujin support here, nice card trap thing. Activate one of these effects, target one Bujin monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand, target one banish Bujin monster, send it to your grave. Because some of the Bujin monsters, they activate from the grave and you banish them. And um, you'll see what I mean when we actually get to him. Here we go. This is one of them, for example. If you control a Bujin monster, you can banish this card from your graveyard, target one face up monster position, and change it to defense. And if you change it to defense, its defense becomes zero for the rest of the turn, which is pretty cool. 1900 defense is, a, is like a proper defensive monster. So you send this to the graveyard, put your opponents, like, let's say, freaking a big monster into defense mode, so Agent Gear Golem, for example. Its defense will become zero and you can tack over it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And then with that trap, you can put it back to the graveyard and do it again, or you can do other stuff. So we got this guy right here, this funky looking centipede. If you control a beast warrior, Bujin monster, you can banish this from your graveyard then target one spell. Controls, destroy it. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you can banish this from your graveyard if you control a face up Bujin monster and destroy some spells and traps. Really cool. 1700 attack as well. We've got Vampire's Grace right here. Not the best card, but it's still a zombie. When a level 5 or higher zombie monster is special summoned to your field by the effects, you can pay 2000 special summon this from your graveyard. Blah 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 blah. Oh, that's the last bit of his effect is really nice. In the TCG, like the real life, it didn't see so much, so much play, but in Duel Links, it might. Once per turn, you can declare a monster spell or trap, your opponent selects one of them monsters from the deck and sends it to graveyard, so you got, you just keep spamming spell and then you have to set, spend all of the spells and throw into the graveyard. Pretty cool. Bewigian, another one. Text is super small, great. <laughs> 1600 attack, 1900 defense. If a Bewigian monster in your graveyard or face up on the field is banished, you can special summon this from your hand. In face-up defense, once per turn during the end phase, if a Bujin monster was added from the deck to the hand, except by drawing it, where you control this face-up on the field, you can draw an extra card, and then discard one card. That's pretty cool. It's got so many effects, that's a really cool card. 
So we've got this worm beast looking dude. This face up. This face up card on the field returned to owner's hand during the end phase of the turn. So it's just like a spirit in a way. A really bad spirit. You summon it and it goes back to your hand. Can't see that having much play. Destruction punch. If the attack of an attacking monster your opponent controls is lower than defense. We all know what this does. It's a pretty cool card. But it's a normal. And with some of these normals I'm just going to skip over them because they're not that like grand or that good. Once per turn you can flip this card face down. Oh sorry it's a flip. Yeah. This card gains 2,400 during damage calculation only. That's pretty powerful. Sand Gambler. This is a flippy head coin thing that's going to work with Joey. Um, toss three coins. If all land on heads, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. If all tails, um, basically you do the same to you. <laughs> really cool card. It's going to see some play in the Joey decks. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent by a direct attack, draw one card during the end phase, destroy this card. Not that good. Yeah, especially for having 1000 attack. Foolish Revival. Select one monster from your opponent's graveyard, special summon it in defense. Not that good. Could work. Actually, I'm not even going to say that. <laughs> it's going to work in Lava Golem decks. Bring back something from your opponent's graveyard so they got more than one monster on the field and then tribute them for a lava golem. That's gonna work. Pretty cool. Fine. Discard two cards. I don't know what this is gonna work in. I don't think it works for Dark Worlds, but it would be just discard two cards. <laughs> um Healing Wave this is a cool card. I do like this one. Healing Wave. Once per turn, you can select another face-up monster you control, gain life points equal to the monster's level, times 100. So if it's 7 starred, you gain like 700, or something like that. It's it's just a pretty cool card. I like it. I like it. Card of Sacrifice, draw two cards. And then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If the combined attack of all monsters is less than the attack of your opponent's monster, blah, 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 you can't special summon them, blah, 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 blah. It's basically just draw two cards and then some other effects that you don't need to worry about. Card crush. Each player can special summon one. So wait a minute, I'm doing it there. Eh, not too good. Bewigin, another one. During your main phase one, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard target one Bewigin monster you control. It can attack your opponent directly. That's a nice ability. So, yeah, I like that. I like that one a lot. Another Bewigin. Um, during your main phase, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard target one Bewigin monster you control. If it attacks a defense position. Oh, that one gives you Bujin's piercing. Pretty cool. Here's another support card for him. At the start of main phase one, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, and you control a beast warrior Bujin monster until the end of the opponent's blah blah blah, they can't activate spells or traps. Pretty cool. This this dude's cool. Well this card um, is face up defense position. Oh, it's basically when it's in defense position, Bujin monsters you control can't be destroyed by card effects. That's pretty cool, I guess. 1,900 defense. When a beast warrior Bujin monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to graveyard, you can send this from your hand to the graveyard special summon one Bujin monster from your deck. That's really cool. So yeah, if, if someone blows up your Bujin, you send this to the graveyard from your hand and special summon another Bujin. Sorted. That, and that's the ritual for the like paladin stuff, and then it goes back to the beginning. So yeah, the, my main thoughts on this box is the best thing to come from it is going to be the Bujin deck. As you could see from all of the um, stuff it can do, it's going to be special summoning from the deck. It's going to, it's going to be sending cards from the hand to the graveyard, sending cards from the graveyard out of play. It's going to have some crazy, crazy, like insane stuff to do with it. So yeah, these were my thoughts on the box. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. Let me know down in the comments which cards you're looking forward to in this box. And yeah, let's hope that we all pull what we want for, um, when the box comes out. Thank you for watching and peace.